Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. This is way back. Walk him out. Chris Taylor. What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads Live, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined tonight by Scott Gearman. Scott, eight nights away from regular season baseball. You fired up over there? I am as excited as I can be, um, considering where the roster's at. This is, uh, Dodger fans need to be excited. This is where yeah. entering a season where it's as pivotal as it gets. Uh, I think we're all kind of gassed on spring trading, even though it's abbreviated, uh, but just like you said, let's get excited. This is uh they're starting the year off in a really fun spot. I'm I am juiced. Yeah. It's spring yeah. training is the funniest thing to me because it's like pitchers and catchers report, and we're so like desperate for anything baseball related. We just want to see pictures of guys wearing baseball hats, throwing baseballs. And then you get to days like today where it's like, geez Louise, we have how many more spring training games to go? And it's gonna be even worse in between Korea and the domestic opening day, as it is being called, when they've got to go back to exhibitions. So I, I'm with you, Scott. I am completely done with exhibitions. That said, we are going to talk about some of the stuff that happened in exhibitions. Curious, just for you, before we dive into some of this stuff, are, are we at the point where does any of this stuff matter now? Like, are we late enough in the spring where you take a little bit more stock of what we're seeing? Or is it it's all sort of nonsense? I think, you know, <laughs> it's great to for narrative sake and talking about for spring training stats and but more so i've been on the side of that it's more process oriented stuff i yeah. think that uh this year we are seeing play you know mookie Betts and otani freddie freeman always takes his, like a ton of swings but i feel like looking at it as a whole we're seeing their regular lineup really going out there and playing a bunch and they're performing. So I think that having this little bit of a hot start in terms of just looking good, I, you know, I couldn't care. Results are awesome. And that's indicative of where you feel as a team. I think it matters right now. Uh, I don't care what they're doing, but it's always good to see positive results and no injuries. Uh, yeah, and it's just overwhelming that a lot of what they're doing pitching wise, they've been terrific this spring offensively and the big stars are coming up. And even Will Smith's have a lot of rebounds there. We can get into a ton of different stuff, man, because I think I was looking at some stats uh, from years prior. Like it matters. I know nobody flamed me on that. But I think that rolling into the regular season with positive results, it matters to an extent. So seeing that like in, in, in a large sample size is great. Yeah. Yeah, it, I, I'm kind of with you. Like, I will never yeah. get sick of watching Otani hit home runs, and I don't know how that ball he hit today got out. I mean, he he hit that ball so high in the air, it looked like a pop-up, and then you're like, oh, wait, this guy's 6'5", and as Steven Nelson calls him, he's basically an Avenger. And so the yeah. ball gets out because it's Otani, and we're going to talk glass now in a little bit and his performance. And so I, I think you definitely see a progression of – I mean, the Dodgers are playing real games in like seven or eight days, and so guys have moved from like, hey, we're trying things out, to I'm getting ready for the regular season now. And so I think there is a little bit more. I mean, you, you've got to take into account who they're playing against, like who's glass now striking out, who's Otani hitting a home run off of. But if it's major league guys, it's all, I think it's worth looking at. I'm not saying you bet your life that it means something. Some guys can't turn on the switch until it's real and it's regular season baseball. And so you, they may struggle and figure it out on opening day. Whereas other guys, you can take a little bit of positive momentum from the spring into the regular season. So here's the plan for tonight's show. We're going to talk Gavin Lux because that's the biggest headline. It's the biggest thing people are talking about, specifically some quotes he had yesterday about whether or not he has a throwing issue. So Scotty and I will break that down. We'll talk about a little sickness bug circulating through the Dodgers clubhouse. Hopefully nothing that uh, gets people sick. We'll talk Justin Wilson, a relief pitcher, who I know, Scott, you liked, but who today decided to become a free agent. He opted out of the minor league contract. He signed, so we'll talk that. We'll talk Tyler Glass now, how dominant he's been the last two outings. We'll do a little rapid-fire stuff and take some questions. Again, thank you to everybody joining us live on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter. We appreciate you. Yes, some people have noticed I did get a haircut. You can tell I've gotten a haircut because there's no hat. We ditched the hat for a couple weeks, and then the hair starts to grow back, and we get lazy. We put the hat on. So for now, we've got uh, we've got no hat and a, and a fresh cut. Over here, but Scott, let's talk Gavin Lux. Um, some obviously we know the narrative around Gavin Lux. We know the defense wasn't good enough at shortstop. The Dodgers went from talking really positively to making a permanent for now, my favorite quote of the spring, a permanent yep. for now switch of Mookie Betts to short. Gavin Lux moves to second base. 
I guess you could say it's been better. Like it hasn't been perfect. It hasn't been good. Um, he's got a lot of throwing stuff where he's dropping down and making weird angle throws for no reason. And then of course the biggest sort of cherry on top, if you will, was the dropped fly ball that he has yesterday. We could talk whether that Chris Taylor's fault was that Gavin Lux's fault. Then when it, when you're having a spring like Gavin Lux's, he's going to get blamed no matter what. But I think this was the key yeah. quote that he was asked about his inability to throw the baseball. And he said this, I don't think it's a throwing issue. I think I just need to keep getting game reps. I think just getting out there, continuing to play, it's knocking rust off more than anything. This is a guy who a year ago tore up his ACL and his LCL. So are you buying this quote at all, Scott, that it's knocking off rust and it's not a throwing issue? So much to unpack here, Jeff. Like we, uh, there's so many different ways. Like I, you, I know you have a ton of thought this as well. We both do. I, Knocking off rust, a little bit of both. I, I, it has to be a little bit of both. He hasn't played regularly since 2021, uh, like at, at shortstop, and then gets moved over to second base abruptly. They kind of had to make that move. I'll say a little bit of both. Uh, and I know everyone who understands this, they've seen players not – I don't know if he has the yips. I think he's just – this is where I'll say a little bit of the rust. And, and, yeah. and I think we both have to kind of – go on a rant just to kind of get a point across because it can, it's such a unique situation. We don't see this very often. When you do, you feel for the player. It stinks. It stinks to see a guy who has such high hopes for it. Um, we'll get into it because I know you think I'm totally out on him, but I truthfully have like a, a, a very level-headed view with what they really, I think they should do with Gavin Lux. But I want to say, I hope it's rust, but it's at this point, it's got to be that when he gets the ball, He's thinking that, you know, let's yeah. just make a clean throw. But we've and the reason why that this ha I feel like this is just rust is because there are certain instances where he gets a, you know, he gets a transfer on his on a turn two and he makes a perfect throw there. So it's yeah. in him. He's able to do it. And I know you just like you said, he can. He's just not. Yeah, I, I think we've got an interview with Steven Nelson, Dodgers play by play guy. It's going to be going up tomorrow. We talked a little bit about the Mookie Betts, Gavin Lux thing, and he kind of, you know, made the point of emphasizing just how extensive the knee surgery that Gavin Lux did like this is ACL and LCL. It's a major surgery. It's 12 months ago. And so I do think there's a part of it when he says it's knocking rust off. I think that's fair, but it's also hard for me, Scott, to blame everything on that. When he says, Hey, I, my knee feels good. Um, says his knee feels great. You know, I get like getting your legs underneath you. I could see how that's different, but uh, to your point, like you see it happen the right way a couple of times, which makes me think, it's not a physical thing. It just seems entirely mental. And so maybe he's right. It's not a throwing issue. Like if we're willing to categorize the mind in a different category than throwing, then I think it's probably right. I think it's mental. And throwing a baseball is just one of these weird things. It's like swinging a golf club. The number of things on your body that have to be going right in order for the ball to get where it's supposed to go at the velocity it's supposed to, even the slightest hiccup can make this thing a total disaster. And I think that's yeah. what we've seen. And so I I'm with you. I'm optimistic about Gavin Lux. I have no concerns about him offensively. And I'm honestly kind of surprised that the offense has been pretty good this spring, even with all the mental stuff on defense. I guess my question to you, Scott, is do you believe that in the next month to two months, we're going to get to a place where Gavin Lux kind of levels off defensively and gets to at least a, a place of being competent of being like, oh. he's not going to win a gold glove, but we're not talking about it all the time. Is it okay if I say it's not in, in major leagues? Like it, I, I it might be in triple a, like okay. if it's, if it's still going on, like they, the offense is at a point, the lineup is at a point where they will be able to with like absorb stuff like this. You know, he's a fine defensive player since I know I looked it up. Yeah. And 1,346 in, a two, in two thirds innings since 2019, he's got 16 DRS. So defensive run safe. So he's an athletic guy. And by all accounts, his health is there. Uh, if he's able to remedy that, then he's going to be a terrific defensive second baseman. And I know somebody mentioned in chat, they have a lot of team control with him. So yeah, they're yeah. able to play that game or if he doesn't, they don't want to really rock that boat, but maybe that is even more of a negative. Do they really want to pull that yeah. plug and, and put him down there? Do they just keep riding him out? And if it works, it works. Uh, his offense will be there, but I've spoke already before that. I think he's a kind of a guy that both things need to be lined up. He needs to be solid defensively. He needs to be sound offensively to really like see his peak, like, of course, but I think to be all there, 
I think yeah. that's exactly what Gavin Lux needs. He needs to be feel, you know, okay defensively for the offense to really translate so we can see what he has. But the offense is going to score. So yeah. that's fine. But the defensive issues, that's stuff where you can cost runs and, and then it can snowball. If you ask me in a month or two, yeah, that's a tough bet just because it's we'll call it, we'll just say it for this, you know, for conversation, the yips. We'll say he's yeah. is he going to be able to shake the yips in a month or two? It's kind of yeah. an impossible thing to say. I'll say Yes, he'll level that out. He'll find some. They'll find some common ground that he'll get over that hump. I, I'm going to buy in on his athleticism. I'll buy in on the coaching staff and the front office believing in him and doing it yeah. again, even though that's not the popular thing. But I yeah. still maintain that I could I could see him in AAA. What about you? Yeah, I. I- I mean, the question I was going to ask you is like the season starts next week. Then there's another yeah. week off. It's basically very end of March. So my question for you was going to be, where's Gavin Lux on May 1st? And I'm not talking trade stuff. Like I'm okay. just talking, is he the starting second baseman for the Dodgers on May 1st? Or is he a triple A or is he a bench bat? You know, like I, I think there's so many ways this can play out. I, I just, I'm, I'm an optimist at heart. I want to believe there's a path forward for the guy in part because I just, I, I, like it's one thing if a guy's just not good at something when I'm watching someone struggle mentally, it like crushes me because I can only imagine how helpless it feels. So I just want to believe. So if I was answering my own question, I would say May 1st, I think Gavin Lux is still the starting second baseman for the Dodgers. I don't think it's perfect, but I don't think it's, you know, even I don't think it's nearly as bad as what we've seen in the spring. So that's where I would land. It sounds like you and I are in alignment on that. Is that fair? Yeah. I mean, like, I, I don't want him to fail. Like, I don't want it to get to a point where they're like, yep, pull the plug. Like I want it to work out just clearly because they, they refrain from upgrading at that position. And now you're seeing Mookie Betts. It's, it's a, a, a very, uh, you know, unique spot that Gavin, like Mookie Betts says, they're going to be the everyday shortstop or everyday second baseman. And then now they're like, just slide over to shortstop. So yeah. that like that alone, like that's not an easy move to make. I, I know I've yeah. seen the thing. I know you, you owned me last year when I was like, yeah, what's the more demanding thing play right field or second base. When then the front office comes out and they're like, yeah, it's to take a load off his body. And then I'll just, I'll wear that one. I didn't forget it. I got you. I'll remember, but it's, it's for them to say that the, if they're okay, moving Mookie bets to shortstop one buys in they're a great Mookie's athleticism. They're yeah. okay yeah. with it. They know he can play, you know, he'll be premier offensively, defensively. We'll see, but um, you have to believe he'll be av- league average, above average. But for them to go that way with Gavin Lux uh, really fast, yeah, they're sounding an alarm. They know that this is something that they've they've got a slow play because I know somebody else, you could chat, you're on fire tonight because Dodger fans, they'll boo. They will get on him about that. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a relentless fan base that uh, we spoke before the show that the team is in a spot where they're going to win. They need to win now. They're, you know, if it's not getting better at a certain period of time, they've got to use the rest of their roster or their resources to get somebody in there who's not going to be, you know, a liability in that sense that it's going to tumble. Yeah, we got a super chat here from Laura. Thank you as always. She said, well, putting Mookie at shortstop hurt the Dodgers in the long run. Um, I'm going to, I want to sort of take a tangent real quick, Laura, because yeah, you, you say long run. What's interesting to me is, Scott, I had the same reaction to you when the Dodgers made the switch to Mookie Betts at short. And my initial thought was like, man, we we, we had done a show the night before and said, hey, just give him a chance. And then the next day, it's like, yeah, we did. OK, hey, we're making the switch. But this is what I'll say. I, I've actually the more I've thought about it, I actually kind of respect the way the Dodgers did it because they knew like. If we're going to make this move, let's get these guys as many reps at shortstop and at second base as humanly possible before these games count. Like if we drag this out another two weeks until domestic opening day and then switch, well, then Mookie Betts is getting like real reps at shortstop for the first time in game. Gavin Lux is like trying to figure out second base on the fly. So I've come around and saying if they were going to make the switch, I like that they were just decisive and made it and let these guys get more reps. But to back to Laura's question here, do you think putting Mookie Scott at shortstop hurts the Dodgers in the long run? Hurt? I don't think it hurts them. I, I don't think it hurts them. Uh, if anything, like long run, I I prefer to see Miguel Rojas at shortstop. Like if that's how the, if they move off of Lux, then I'd prefer to see like Miguel Rojas at shortstop as the long run. Like you know what you're getting there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to some areas it might, but. I mean, you're sliding over Mookie Betts to shortstop. It sounds pretty great to have a top five MVP offensive guy playing shortstop for you, I think. But in terms of 
lineup flexibility. I, I think it's kind of a push, but yeah. I, I don't think it matters too much. It just defensively, I think I'd feel better um, uh, putting Miguel Rojas out there, but even he's having his own injury issues. So I think they have to. I, yeah. Yeah. I think they just kind of have to do it and hurt them. I don't know. I, it's probably yeah, like the, the margins. The only, thing, the only thing I can think on like hurting the Dodgers would be if you, if you think the toll that shortstop is going to take on Mookie Betts physically is going to have a dramatic, even a, a slight impact on his offensive ability and over the course of a season will wear him down more quickly. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just tend to believe Mookie's a freak. And that he's going to be able to handle this. And, and I know he's not like in his peak physical condition, but he's still in his prime years. I think he can handle it. And as far as in the long run, like I don't think beyond 2024, the Dodgers have really made any decisions here. Um, they've got some young guys like Trey Sweeney in the organization. They could potentially try a year from now at shortstop. They could obviously spend the next few months trying to trade for someone. They could go out and sign a free agent. Like I don't think they've made any long-term decisions um, on that front. So I think it's a fair question if we're talking about Mookie physically, but I just think he'll be able to hold up. And yeah. I, I think the Dodgers made, I think this is a short-term decision that you could make the case. I think Scott, that actually has almost no long-term ramifications. If there were long-term ramifications, it's maybe Lux. Like if you feel like, Oh, they've ruined Lux and now it's over with, but like we might've already been there anyways. Like, so I don't know if this decision really changed anything. Yeah, I think it's kind of just I, I he can handle it. Like Mookie Betts is coming in, he's playing a ton. Like he's playing a lot in spring training, which says a, a bunch for where he probably feels. So, uh, yeah. you know, he's been work he worked out with Yamamoto early in in spring training. Uh, I think he's incredibly motivated this time around, which is great to see. We saw his uptick in production. See now the conversation shifts to what positives are we getting from, you know, what motivated Mookie Betts now playing on the infield. We saw an uptick of production when he moved to the infield. So, I believe we're going to get, you know, a lot of what we did. I don't know about last year's production off like homer wise but we're going to get a terrific offensive player i think just the trickle down now is is miguel rojas will he be ready to start and i i because he's dealing with a lot of the same issues he had last year he's got some leg soreness now last year he dealt with various injuries quite a few which uh for an older infielder you kind of have to go okay well now we've kind of got to shuffle this around which is why kike was a great ad chris taylor you're going to get a bunch more so yeah. It's uh, it's where do you feel where do, I want to know from where you sit? Do you think that if Gavin Lux isn't ready to go, do you yeah. believe that they have enough currently on their major league roster to shuffle the deck and kind of rotate guys around with the with like a rotation of infielders? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think honestly, and again, it's something that came up in a conversation with Steven Nelson. Like these are these are not first world problems. These are first world of the first world problems. Like yeah. the reason we are so obsessed about this. I think is because there's nothing else to complain about in Dodger camp right now. Like there, we're not talking about who's going to be the starting center fielder. There's no debate about who the fifth, like the, yeah, I guess there is a fifth starter debate, but like, there's no debate about like, is the pitching staff intact? Like glass now is not struggling. Yamamoto's not struggling. Otani's like, we are a type of people that need something to complain about. Gavin Lux is giving it to us. Like, I'm not saying we're creating a narrative where there isn't one, but I think, in a normal year, like when James Outman is making a run and all of a sudden he's going to be the surprise opening day starter in center field. Like, I don't think Gavin Lux gets as much airtime, but like, as we're sitting here planning out a show, this is the story that everybody's talking yeah. about that, that is happening in Dodgers land. And so I think it's, that's sort of why we're having this conversation more so than, you know, um, any other reason in my estimation. Yeah. And I think it's, and I, it, it, people might think this is overkill. This is an overkill on this topic. This is a team that's headlined by Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, you know, Will Smith, Teoscar Hernandez, Tyler Glass. Now like go down the list. Yeah. This is, uh, we're in, we're in the golden age guys. Yeah. This is well, it. And, and, and it's hilarious to me because like, if they had just yeah. decided to put Miguel Rojas at shortstop, like, would people be complaining about how terrible he is offensively? He's one of the worst offensive players in major league baseball, you know, but like, it's just kind of we would know what to expect, and so there wouldn't really be a something to argue about. We have, <laughs> but a, we, have we have we have my my favorite ceiling and floors. We have our we have our baseline for him. Yeah, we know right. what he's going to bring, but it's just it, it's upsetting that he's dealing with a lot of the same stuff. But he's an older player. Let's let him yeah. ramp up, see where he's at. But it's 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 a starting caliber player who they yeah. refrained from upgrading the position, and now he's having trouble reacclimating to you know normal <laughs> just normal stuff on a baseball diamond. So. Uh, 
I believe in what he'll do. I believe he'll come back and figure it out. But will that timeline line up with what the Dodgers are expecting from their starting lineup? I don't know about that. That's for me. That's where it's at. It, it, they, I don't believe the front office sounds. This is going to be a ridiculous take, but I'm, I know my people might, it might not be ridiculous. It might, it might might not be ridiculous. I don't think they'll allow that to be that a conversation going on that long. Yeah, they don't want that to be a, a narrative with the team, you know. But they're trotting out a guy who's still figuring it out and making errors on basic throws. If it continues to happen, they will make a decision because we saw them. Like I said, move Mookie Betts immediately to shortstop. They don't want yeah. this to become a worse problem. I don't expect them to like allow it to continue to happen at the major league level for an extended period of time. What's interesting to me, and I see we have a super chat, zip code zero. We're going to get to you in just a second. But you mentioned like, hey, we have the baseline Miguel Rojas. He's a competent major league starter, right? Like yeah. Miguel Rojas in 125 games last year was 0.6 wins above replacement. Gavin Lux is going to beat that number in his sleep in 125 yeah. games. He can make He can make an error every game. And he'll be worth double that at minimum. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's the crazy part to me is like if Miguel Rojas was in there, who is a basically replacement level player, when you factor in elite offense and a 69 weighted runs created plus, which was one point lower than it was in 2022. He has been 30 plus percent worse than league average offensively two years in a row. And if they plugged him in, nobody would be talking about it. We'd just be like, yeah, okay, cool. Cause he's great at defense and terrible at offense. And my thing is, it looks way worse when you're good at offense and terrible at defense, even though like overall value added or taken away from the team is probably similar. It's like one looks way worse than the other. And that's where we are with Gavin Lutz. He's a lightning rod player who looks really bad on defense. And that's, we need something to complain about. I think it's the perfect storm for Lux because again, I'm looking at Rojas. I like, I'm not any, I don't like have anything personal against Rojas he's a replacement level player. He's a defensive elite guy who's really bad offensively. And we're talking about Gavin Lux, who's the opposite, but it just, it looks worse. And so yeah. that's, that's what's so fascinating to me. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I agree on a couple spots. Uh, I, Rojas, like the only the thing that's tough to buy into long-term is his ability to like, we don't need slug. I've said this a bunch before. We don't need slug at every position. You don't need elite yeah. offensive production, every position. I just need you to give me something. But Rojas is at a point of his career where he's fallen off a cliff so hard that it yeah. sometimes yeah. almost feels like a, like a desi, like a, like a, like a, like a pitcher. And yeah. that might be even, you know, it's not that bad, but it's not it, that it bad, but it's close. It, 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 it's close. Like, if he gave us something like that, that he did when he was in Miami a year, like two years before he came over, it would be insane. Like this, yeah. you're, you're getting a, like a plus 275 batting average guy. Shout out to Matt. Uh, but you'd be getting a lot of like, we would have no complaints. This he yeah. would be the starting shortstop. But now we're just hoping that if he's out there, he's giving us defense. And he gave us a lot of plays that we were like, where was this? Yeah, where we did last year. So uh, we know what we're getting with him. His body will hold up if they just give him some patience, give him some time. But reverse splits, guys, Kike, we'll see how he does again. But he's going to get starts versus lefties. Taylor's look great in spring. Uh, but like you said, when it's bad defensively, that's all you think about with a player. And it's yeah. so much worse that when you suck offensively. Right. Nobody thinks about an 0 for 4. Nobody thinks about an 0 for 4. You could go 0 for 8. Nobody's talking yeah. about you. But you make two errors in two games, and it's like, the magnifying glass is on you. Uh, zip yeah. code zero had a question here. Odds Lux is a Dodger in 2025. Uh, this is a tough one. I, I will say, I'm actually going to say a number that's probably going to be surprisingly high to people. I think it's going to be like 70% that he's back with the Dodgers next year. Because, like, if he's so bad that they need to fix this, they're not going to want to trade him. They're not going to want his value to be at that point to trade him. And if he's good enough to where he's actually valuable in a trade, then I think they keep him and they're not making the trade. So I, I don't, because the other thing too, Scott is looking at the roster is like, they don't need to trade for starting pitching, knock on wood, right? They don't need to trade for a lot of these other premium positions. So a trade involving Lux would only be in exchange for another middle infield prospect. And I mm -hmm. just think the Dodgers and other teams would have a value on Lux that wouldn't make sense in a trade. So 70%. That's my number. You taking over or under? Nice job. That was good stuff. Uh, probably the same. It might be like, I, I'll say, I'll say just to be different, I'll say like 60%. But 60%. it's a good, yeah, it's exactly where he's at. It's a tough spot for the Dodgers. He's, 
Uh, this is as when these type of things happen, you suddenly become not a desirable trade target for other yeah. teams. They're like, we don't want this. We don't want to have to fix this. this that's the last thing on a, on a simple toss to first base. We That's something we don't want to deal with. So yeah. uh, I think he'll be a Dodger, but I'm going to say it's for the wrong reasons that it's that he's yeah. underperforming. Shout and out I to think it, and that Exactly. I think it's a combo. Like the 70% is 35% chance he figures it out and they want to keep him. 35% chance he's really bad and they they're just no value in trading him right like both yeah. of those both of those um scenarios leave you in the exact same place which is Gavin Lux is still a member of the Dodgers a yeah. year from now we uh, make we make we make, the, we make the joke that it's like you know Gavin enjoy Milwaukee but it's like the the Brewers are a very smart organization they're not going to be like yeah we'll make the if we you know one two for one flip include Gavin Lux in there we'll do that no yeah. it'll yeah. if if any if the Dodgers make any move it won't be Gavin Lux going back to the team where they're getting the player to replace him for so yeah uh, guy wash your eyes on that one everybody chat sorry I know I'm with you I want it to be a better spot but I think they're gonna see what they have in him yeah and Gavin Lux uh he's in his first year of arbitration this year. So two more years of team control, 2025 and 2026, and then an unrestricted free agent 2027. We do have two videos coming out later this week, by the way, one talking about Willie Adamas that will feature Scott and Blake. And then another that will be talking about Hassan Kim, two of the trade potential trade candidates, guys who are available by, by some accounts who are middle infielders that might solve the problem. Both guys, in the final year of their deal, of course, whether or not the Dodgers would trade with the Padres is an interesting one, but um, I know you like Adamas briefly. Do you want to give me your thoughts on Ha Sung Kim? Like, is he a guy that you'd be fired up to go add if, I mean, look, all the caveats, Padres, Dodgers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the caveats aside, Ha Sung Kim, Willie Adamas, how do those two compare for you? I mean, you, there's no way they make the trade to the Dodgers. There's just no I, way. It, but like, put all that aside. Put all that yeah. aside. Players wise, players wise, I think Hassan Kim's in a very valuable player. Yeah. Like he's he's terrific. Like yeah. they it's it's egregious what they've done with him. That that yeah, let's go sign Xander just you know for the hell of it, make him a first baseman. Why not? Let's have it's just yeah. a weird thing they've got going on over there. Like like now right. Xander's a shortstop. It's just I Hassan Kim is terrific. I think yeah. he he'll get paid. I don't know how many years he has left. Uh, he's in the last year of his contract, so he's expected so, yeah. to opt out, which is why I think yep. it's not a zero percent chance that they would consider trading him if the alternative is losing for nothing. I don't know. We'll see. Like like we've seen their organization get kind of petty, throwing parades yeah. after nothing. So like it's just. I don't think they'll do that, but it's definitely a, a, a name to look out for. I would love him yeah. in Los Angeles. So we'll, we'll do that when we get there. But Willie Adamas, you know, I think I'll save a lot for the video with Blake just because we'll, we'll be in the lab on that one. We'll be really in our bag talking about Willie Adamas and, and how much he would be for the Dodgers and what it would take. Um, but I, you have Adamas ahead of Kim, like just, uh, just right now it, with all things included, yeah. or just as players, like just as players. Um, I would say Hassan Kim. Okay. I would take him. I would take him head and shoulders. That's a, that's a, he's a, he's a guy. That's a, that's yeah. a, a platinum type it, glove. They're interesting because they're both elite defensively. Kim probably a little more versatility. Seems like he could play a few more positions. The offensive profile is just completely different. And it, it part of it is dependent upon like, do you believe in Hassan Kim's sort of breakout last year versus are you buying a bounce back for Willie Adamas? Adamas is like all power, no average, tons of strikeout guy. Whereas Hassan oh. Kim is like, he hit 17 home runs, which is surprising. His stat cast stuff is not awesome on the exit velocity, but he's like a high walk, low strikeout, kind of hit for a little bit of average on base percentage guy. So um, it, it's interesting. So we'll leave that there again. Stay tuned. Two videos coming out later this week, one on Adamus and one on Hawks on Kim um, there. Uh, zip code zero. What, what is the, who is the cost for Adamus? This is the interesting one to me, Scott. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody, if, if you've seen me talk about this before, if you follow me on Twitter, my issue with, like, to, to clearly state my Willie Adamas position. Question number one, is Willie Adamas way better at shortstop than the options the Dodgers have? Absolutely, unquestionably, yes. He Like, the Dodgers, if Willie Adamas was a Dodger tomorrow, the Dodgers are better than they are today. Mookie goes back to second. Adamas is an upgrade over Gavin Lux. My issue is the gap between Willie Adamas and, say, Gavin Lux or Miguel Rojas or whoever, like, fill in the blank. Miguel Vargas, whoever you want to put at second base, the gap between those two, in my estimation, will not be big enough to justify what it actually costs to go out and get Willie Adamas. It's kind of my take. So 
that this is me projecting that the cost is high for Willie Adamas. Like, I don't think we're talking, you know, um, Emmett Sheehan type stuff, but like, no. I think we're talking top 100 guys. Right. Maybe it depends on what list you're looking at. It'll be, it'll be something, but I, I, I really like I said, Nick Frasso and Blake was like, sure, send him out of here. Great, send him. Yeah, I'm with him on that one. Like reliever profile, yeah, coming off a major injury. Like, yeah, I would do that. If they would take that, I would send him tomorrow. I would I would drive him to LAX myself. Uh, but Gavin Stone? No. No. Andy Pajes? No. Absolutely not. River no. Ryan? Mm, I think that's too much. I See, think that's I'm with you. I think this is, I think those are the types of guys that are going to get asked for the Brewers. Are weird though, man. The, the Brewers are super weird. Like we, we, they, they, they know you don't fleece the Milwaukee Brewers. It just doesn't, they, they understand prospects. They have different valuations and clearly the Dodgers do because the Dodgers have high, like they have high rank prospects all the time. And if stuff doesn't pan out, like another team just won't value those. So it's kind of, it's kind of strange. Like the, Teams are looking at Dodger prospects a little bit differently, um, but they definitely have a lot of guys that they should look to move. Yeah. I, I think so. I said this, we talked about this last year. We, you and I were big time on this, that we were like, it's, it's somebody said bursting at the seams. I agree. There's just a, like a gluttony of players that you feel like they could get rid of, but I want them to be a year early and not a year late. Like we've had, it's happened with Diego and which is unfortunate, uh, but he was trending down for a bit. So uh Adamus, I think we're kind of underselling the fact of getting him in the organization if they want to give him an extension long term, like for a, yeah. a handful of years, because that power at shortstop, I've said it a bunch since like 2019, he's only behind Corey Seager in home runs and that shortstop, that's a premium position. So you're getting power and he's great yeah. defensively. So it's valuable. So what's your cost there? Getting a shortstop that's does things that you love long term or you know, the if of, you know, these pro this one guy who you might, he might crack the bigs and stick around. I like proven players. If you have, if you can make the move, you do it. Um, but the brewers are smart, so it'll be tough. And there's a reason why they haven't made that, that trade yet. Yeah. I'm looking at MLB.com just last week, released their top 30 rankings for the Dodgers prospects. They're higher on Frasso. They clearly have a different, like, it, I mean, your view on Frasso is going to be dependent on if you agree that it's a reliever profile, um, I'm not saying you're wrong. I think that seems to be the minority opinion in prospect circles. Um, MLB.com has him as the number two prospect in the Dodgers system, a top 100 guy. Um, they've only got two Dodgers in the top 100 this year, uh, rushing and Frasso. But, you know, like they've got River Ryan fifth, Gavin Stone sixth, Kyle Hurt seventh, Jackson Fer Ferris eighth, Cartaya. I mean, th there's interesting names. And, you know, how much some of these guys are worth and what would be a deal worth making. I, I just... I'm basing my decision off what I projecting the cost to be, which I think will be higher than, than, than I think you and I are agreeing on, on the things that we would be willing yeah. to give up or not. And so I'm, I'm answering the question of, I think that's what it would cost. And so it's a no for me. Um, you know, if you can patch together a Landon knack, you know, and you know, I don't know someone else <laughs> like sure you know yeah but no, I'm, I it, if we'd see it and then we'd we'd you know we'd cope either in a good way or a bad way with the with the cost of what it is but i think it's i'll say it and i hope everybody remembers to lock up a premier a premier pre, yeah, premier position for like the foreseeable future with a guy who is proven at the big league level for prospects it's at a time where we're in a window everybody's got to remember yeah. we're in a window where you need to have this thing like this you know roster kind of locked in and they have the outfield prospects ready to go but they don't really have a surefire infielder they just yeah. don't so it's either you wait till the deadline which i think they'll do to make a serious move if they do that or you wait just like you brought up pass on kim you wait till next year and then you really see if you know do you want to hand out big money to Hassan Kim? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think he might, he might be too much. I would go, I'd go Willie Adamas. I just want to see him in this system. Yeah. We'll see. I, I'm excited about your video. Cause I've already shared all my thoughts Thanks. on my offensive concerns. And if you guys can convince me not to be concerned about a way to runs created plus that's gone down three years in a row, then you may convince me. So what remains to be seen? Let's shift gears here a little bit, a quick story. We're speaking of Gavin Lux here, Lux and Muncie both out sick on Tuesday, uh, Connor McGinnis, I believe also out sick. Yeah. Scott, we got a, we got a long flight. A lot of guys trapped in a box together for 13 hours in a couple of days. We're going to, we got a, we're going to have a Dodgers pandemic on our hands. Come to Korea. Oh, 
Oh, too soon, buddy. But I mean, we hope not. They sent him home today. Uh, I don't. I don't know what to say on this one. It, it, I, I'm glad they're taking the initiative and and keeping him out. Hopefully, nothing spreads. But uh, they might just be given some days off. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, we, once he hasn't played since Saturday. Lux was expected to be off today, anyways, because he played yesterday. So he might be sick. He might be sick. Tell him to get yeah. out. You know, go home. <laughs> go rim rest. We don't need anything else kind yeah. of going on. I don't know. It's just a. What do we say by this? I, I, I hope it doesn't spread to the rest. That's why there'll be a taxi squad there. They're sending a, a plethora of options out there. If anything lingers, then there's an issue, but there's plenty of time. Do you think they take the sick guys and they just take the taxi squad and the taxi squad has to sit surrounding the sick guys? It's like, look, if huddle, this is going to spread one level, like it's like how close you're sitting to Gavin Lux and Max Muncy tells you where your standing is on the oh. roster. It's like, hey, uh, Miguel Rojas, uh, why don't you go? Yeah, you're next to Lux today. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Austin. Barnes, yeah, I don't know. You are sitting right in between Lux and Muncie. So oh. it's just random. Not sure how that happened. Yeah. Uh, I, I, hopefully it's nothing serious. Uh, and to, the, to, the, to, to answer the question, is it anything serious? We don't know. Hopefully it doesn't spread to anything else. Hopefully they're yeah. fine. Uh, we'll need Max Muncie big time. We don't need Gavin Lux dealing with anything more, anything I have to yeah. think about. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, guys, maybe this will get his mind off of it. There you go. Yeah. There Give, him go. Give him a break. Give him a break. Give him a break. What do you say? Right. Let's shift to a story that I know is not your 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 happiest, Scott. Justin oh. Wilson electing free agency. My doppelganger, I've I've been told today. Uh your guy. We have a pick put up. Can we put it up? I don't we, we have... don't have a pick. Oh. Somebody can look it up. Somebody yeah, somebody, somebody tweeted it on uh tagged me in it on Twitter. Um he was signed to a minor league deal in February. He opted out, he had the option to opt out of it. He chose to elect free agency today. Um, this is a guy who didn't pitch at all in the major leagues last year, just 3.2 innings in 2022. Um, you like him. I mean, the spring numbers have kind of been a roller coaster, but lots of strikeouts. So tell us why you're uh, you're kind of bummed out about this one. I, you know, I'm bummed out for the person. The the team's fine. Like they don't need this. But if he had a shot to make the the roster, it would just be as a second left-handed option in the bullpen. He's been terrific with the strikeouts. Like I just, I had this down. He's had nine strikeouts in four innings. He's still dealing with a tiny bit of walks, but I'm sure they would find the perfect spot for him. But this is the story for me where it's like a guy where he will be, get picked up with another team in major yeah. league baseball. And I, I tweeted that and I'm very happy about it because I know there'll some, some team will find some value in it because he deserves a chance. Uh, last year he was coming back, uh, yeah with the Brewers and I think it was last year, but he was yeah. warming up in the bullpen. Yeah. He hadn't even made a pitch yet. He was warming up in the bullpen, hurt himself, had a left lat strain, ended his season, which is super unfortunate. And I remember my buddy's a Brewers fan texting me that shout out Tyler. Love you, man. But he was, he was excited about it. That Justin Wilson was going to be out there and you know, he never made a pitch. Uh, he's worked really hard to get to this point. And this seems like this is my Justin Wilson, dude, you're my Cinderella story of Dodger spring training. So not a big deal. Dodgers won't feel any issue losing him, but yeah. he's a solid left-handed option. He's still got a lot left in the tank. He's 36. Uh, it's really good to see him kind of having that bump. So he'll, he'll, he'll able to go find another landing spot somewhere else. So I hope he, he gets picked up. Yeah. I mean, looking at his numbers, like I, I'd heard the buzz around his last couple of outings. Here are his spring numbers, uh, four innings, two earned, five hits, two walks, nine strikeouts. So all those numbers aren't very good. Nine strikeouts and four innings is pretty good. His first outing was his worst. His last three, six Ks, two walks, two hits, one earned run. So it's a little bit better. But look, the people that are like Andrew Friedman was smart enough to sign this guy to a minor league deal. And yeah. he was the same guy making the decision when Justin Wilson, I'm sure, came to them and said, hey, I think I want to opt out. The Dodgers, of course, had the option to just add him to the 40 man roster and keep him around. They elected not to do that. So this was a decision yeah. that the Dodgers were able to make. They could have added him if they wanted to, they chose not to. So I'm with you. He'll go find somewhere to be in a bullpen. And this leads perfectly to another super chat here from zip code zero. We appreciate it. He said, is LA, do the Dodgers have a top five bullpen in major league baseball? I mean, Wilson, I think is looking at this group and saying, I, I don't know where I'm going to fit in. Like, I, I don't know how I crack into this, at least consistently. My odds are better elsewhere. But let me read some of the names in the bullpen, Scott. We got Ryan Brazier, JP Fireisen, uh, Bruce Star Gratterall. Some of these guys, not 100% healthy, but let's just project guys are healthy. None of these are major injuries that we're talking about. Um, Joe Kelly, uh, Evan Phillips, of course, Blake Trinan, Gus Varlin, Alex Vessia, Ryan Yarborough, 
You've got Ricky Venasco, who's down in the minors. You've got Kyle Hurt. Um, is this a top five bullpen in Major League Baseball in your estimation? Yeah, I think so. Last year they were number one ERA wise. I don't see any reason like number one WAR and like number. One, I don't see any reason why they can't do a lot of the same stuff. I'll say third, third in the league. That's a very the, the it's a very thin margin between I would say like the first and then maybe the third bullpen. So I'll say they land in the top three. Will it be number one? I don't think so, but I think in the top three for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I look, I've said it before on this show. I think the bullpen is going to be really, really good. I think Evan Phillips is legit. Uh, we hope Blake Trinan's okay. Blake Trinan has looked really good. If he's back, we didn't, I didn't mention Daniel Hudson because he's not even on the 40 band roster yet, but he's expected to be a part of this group. Yeah, if, if he's back at any level, I know you and me both like JP fire eyes and have high hopes for him that he can eventually get this figured out. And then we're getting to the Gratterall, Joe Kelly, Ryan Brazier tier of guys. I think Alex Vesey is a guy that I still like. And, and they'll just patch this together. So, yes, the, the short answer is they might not have, you know, one of the top five or six relievers in Major League Baseball, although I think Evan Phillips is probably closer to that conversation than he gets credit for. But what they have is, like, we're talking about Joe Kelly or Ryan Brazier being, like, their sixth best relief pitcher. So if that's the case, they're going to be really, really nasty. Um, one thing real quick, you mentioned your Cinderella stories, Justin Wilson. I'm going to do a small plug. We did an interview with John Rooney yesterday. This guy is in AAA. He's a relief pitcher. I think you might hear his name at the major league level at some point. This is not a guy that I was super familiar with prior to the last week, but he was on our show yesterday, and he was awesome. He was awesome. He has the funniest college recruiting story, the most insane college recruiting story I've ever heard. He told a story. My favorite part, Scott, and you would get this, like starting pitchers, when starting pitchers get moved to relief pitchers, most of them are like devastated. They will fight with every fiber of their being to remain a starter. This guy was like excited about getting taken to the bullpen. I'm like, why was that? He goes, dude, I was in double A with Bobby Miller and Emmett Sheehan and Nick Frasso. He's like, I'm looking around at like my shot is not in the starting rotation because I'm not these guys. And I was, I was like, yes, this is, this is honest stuff. And so he's amazing. Basically he wasn't very good. Moved to the bullpen, still wasn't very good. They tweaked the pitch mix, four seamer gone, two seamer in, cutter in, sub three ERA last year. Lefty, velo went up four miles an hour. So it's good stuff. That's my Cinderella story. John Rooney, or as Laura's saying, Ron Juni. That was the pitching coach told him, John Rooney is dead. You're changing your pitches up. You're now Ron Juni. So he's got an elite nickname, an elite college recruiting story, and is a super awesome dude. So watch the video if you haven't already, but that's my Cinderella story. So uh all right let's older move along here. Too, though, right real real quick older yeah. prospect too right he's uh 20 20 what how old is he yeah he's like mid-20s i think three years okay. of college was a third round pick a handful hey. of years ago natural progression works his way yeah. up don't see anything why not yeah no i mean and that's what he would tell you like uh let me look this up i was gonna say 26 he's 27 he's 27 okay. years old pitched a triple a last year um double a and triple a but 2.86 era between the two um, you know, strikeout and inning kind of a guy. So uh, lefty, I I'll just be curious. He's a good dude. I want to root for, for him. Sure. Um, yeah. He's not going to show up on any of these top 30 prospect lists, but it doesn't matter. He'll, he'll be a fun guy to root for. That's not where all the big time guys come from. Everybody check out that interview. I'll watch a little bit of it. Once we hop off, I'll finish it up as I'm eating dinner, but uh, he seems like a fired up guy. Uh, it was awesome. a great start to that. So uh, everybody check that out. Please give, you know, get Jeff works hard when he does these, these interviews, he's fantastic on there. So please give it a shot. I mean, it's uh Rooney's a good dude. He had a lot of fire. So I'm excited to finish that up. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right. Tyler glass. Now, then we'll get to some questions here. Uh, final tune up start. He yep. was pretty good. He was pretty good. I would say Scott five and a third, no hits, no walks, eight strikeouts. I'm joking. He was far, he had one walk. It's far better than pretty good. His last two outings, eight and a third, no hits allowed, 13 strikeouts. The Dodgers name him opening day starter. This is the classic spring training means nothing until it doesn't. And it's spring training, yada, yada, yada. Eight and a third, no hits, 13 strikeouts. That means something no matter where it's happening. I agree. He's not just striking out minor league guys. He's up here, you know, he's, he's facing actual players. So uh, great. What's exactly what you like to see out of your ACE. He's an ACE. We'll chat about it, Jeff. I know we're going to build different for Blake and I are going to round this all year long, man, but uh, it's terrific. This is what you want to see. He's rolling into the year hot. He, he's already, he said early on, he was trying some stuff out, which is why he had a little bit of a hiccup, 
People yeah, are saying, yeah. you know, get on Dodgers. He's not who he is. But this is why you bring him in. This is why you absorb the prospect costs. You extend him. Uh, he's going to do stuff like this. His, it's, this isn't just a spring training type of start. This is stuff Tyler Glasnow can and will do yeah, in the yeah. regular season. Um, expect that type of stuff every day. That's that's a you know high bar. I don't expect that, but he's going to come out here with wipeout stuff, blow players down. Like it's going to be a terrific front end guy. They they, they made the move for a, a, a exactly what they needed. Strikeout stuff. He's if he's there all year, healthy. Yeah. Knock yeah. on wood, everybody. He's exactly what you want out of the front end guy or your Dodgers rotation. This is a, a fantastic transition. Yeah. So he's an ace. He can anchor a staff. Let's roll. Like, yeah. Jeff, no, and, and, and like what you just said is the key part. Like when the Dodgers traded for glass. Now my, my number one concern was health. Um, and I'll be honest. We had a guy on a Will Carroll injury expert on Twitter. And he talked me through why he's not worried at all about glass. Now's elbow. And I felt a whole heck of a lot better after that conversation. There's never been any debate. Like, I, I guess my thing is I'm not surprised. Like there's never been debate about his stuff. The debate is going to be there's really no debate about Tyler Glass now. It's how many innings does he throw this year? For sure. Like, I get is you. it over 120 or under 120? I think that's like ultimately the question here. Um, and 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 again, talking to Will Carroll, he's like, I, I'm not worried at all about his elbow. Getting information, understanding the injury, understanding what happened, why he missed time a couple different places. So um th this is the real deal on Tyler Glass now. I assume, I mean, based on what you just said. No issue with him being the opening day starter over uh, over Yamamoto. None. Like that's. I think he's. I don't think it. Once you get past that first round, it doesn't really matter. I think yeah. opening day stuff only matters if it's the first time through, and then from there, you you know, it, it just depends on days off, and we'll see guys get mixed mixed and match either way. But uh, deserving of an opening day start, absolutely. Tyler Glass, now welcome to the Dodgers, dude. Like this is it's it's a fun stuff. It's it's great to have him back in Southern California. He's a fun watch. He's going to yeah. compete. Um, I love his compete. Love yeah. that. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I use that all the time, but I, he just had a career high in innings pitch this last year. So to Tyler Glass now, he'll tell you he's only had what one, I think it's been one major arm issue. So, and that's just kind of lingered for a bit. And that's been kind of what he's hindered. I think it, it's kind of hindered his, you know, broadening that. I think he builds on it. He's healthy right now. He's in a great system to be where they're able to manage that. They won't yeah. ask him to do too much if it's not there. Uh, so it's the perfect marriage. Um, yeah. Super excited. I love it. Hawaiian Kira, another super chat. Thank you for these. Any other prospects on the list for interviews and introducing to the fans? Uh, none, none in the, in the hopper necessarily, but we're working on it. I want to have John Rooney back on. Part of the reason we talked to him was because he's a part of this prospect showcase. I think something like that is what they're calling it, where the teams put together all-star prospect teams and play against each other. It's coming up in the next few days. I think it's three or four days away. So we had him on. So I joked with him that he needs to be our correspondent at the game and come back after and report. So hopefully we have him back on. But um, it's something we try and do. It's hard this time of year because guys are kind of getting moved up and down and all around and getting ready for different minor league seasons. But we always try our best. Um, if you've been watching the show, we had Michael Grove on a handful of times. Ryan Pepio was on a couple of times before he got traded. We had Vessia on when he was still down in the minor league. So we've been able to do a few of these and, uh, it's good stuff. So n none others that are necessarily, um, on the docket, but we're hopeful Hawaiian Kira. So thank you for that, uh, super chat here. Um, a couple other random rapid fire ones, Scott, just to close the loop on our fanatics and Nike fiasco. What should we say are the Nike fiasco fan fanatics? Whether whether I know Blake hates me saying this, but Fanatics is is pretty much blameless in this. They're just producing the jersey Nike designed. But the MLB Players Association, an MLB spokesperson, has said based on player requests, adjustments are being made to jersey sized waist, inseam length, thigh fit, and the bottom of their pants. So there you go, folks. There's a little Thank more tailoring you. happening for uh, happening for our guys. So we we've got some some better thigh fit, Scott, coming your way. You know me, you know me, a big, big leg guy, a big yeah. leg day guy. That would be at the forefront of my thing. I'd be sitting there with Walker Bueller punching the door like this is egregious stuff, man. So that's great. Uh, I'm, it's a ridiculous conversation to have. These, This is a billion, multi-billion dollar industry. Why are we talking about pants and jerseys? Like, let's make it easy. Yeah. But Sorry, Blake, man. Fanatics doesn't really have this. It's Nike, dude. They I know. Just, he wants yeah. to blame Fanatics. I'm and if he wants to rant, I'm not, I'm not going to tell him he's wrong. Did I tell you my bad experience? I went through it a little bit. They sent me they sent me a kid's jersey, kid's small, and then I they sent me a reorder, and they sent me another kid's small, 
And I was just like, there's no chance. And I sent them both back. And I was like, I'm Matt, I told my girlfriend, I was like, I'm not getting you one. You'll wait. Like, <laughs> we'll have to wait until they figure it out. But I want to know, are they going to make changes to the ones they're selling to fans? Oh, no, like, no. are they? Like, what are they? I mean, is this just pants? Well, or is this- well, so, so here's the thing. The thing on the pants has been widely debated about whether they are actually different pants. People have found pictures where previous years the pants have been see-through on team photo day under the lights, etc. I think it was the reds. And you can go back and see like six years of being able to see the shirt tails underneath the bigger issues that the, the biggest issue, the players had, we had the guy from the athletic on the biggest issue. The players had was that the pants were not fully customizable. They basically had three different pant fits. Like, do you want it loose? Do you want it tight? Do you want it high? Do you want it low? Like there was only a few different options. Whereas they were used to like fully tailored pants. Basically that was the thing they were complaining about most. So I think that's what's happening is that there's going to be more customization of the pants specifically. Um, the colors are not going to be changed. The patches, the lettering, the numbers, the size, none of that's going to be fixed. So I don't, that's why I'm saying I don't think it's going to impact what fans are buying because unless you're trying to buy fully customized pants, which you've probably got bigger life questions if you're buying fully customizable baseball pants as an adult, but you know, I'm not here to judge that in the words of Daniel Starkin, no disrespect to the people that are buying fully customizable baseball pa- pants as an adult, but dot, dot, dot. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, okay. One last thing. I see some people commenting on this. The Dodgers try Korean snacks. Um, I know you have not gotten a chance to see this. I don't think I have to, I have to see it's, it. It's I, incredible content. Was um, Bruce Dar the first one on there? It's Bobby Miller and Michael Grove together. And then it's okay. Bruce Dar and it's Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Oh, and okay. I got to watch like the combo of Michael Grove is just kind of quiet the whole time. Bobby uh-huh. Miller is like exactly who you imagine Bobby Miller to be. Yes. And then you've got Bruce Dar. That's hilarious. You've got Yoshinobu. Who's like, you're getting to know him. So um, a few of my highlights for the people in the chat, um, Bobby, <laughs> they had like seven of them. And my favorite was after he eats the second one, he goes, Oh, that's my number one. Like you've only had two, Bobby. Like let's we got to get through the rest of this list. So I found that comical. Um, the the most memeable moment was one of them was shrimp flavored, and Bobby was not a fan. Bobby was out on seafood. He's not a seafood guy. He tried the shrimp one, and it looked like he was going to puke in his mouth immediately afterwards. Michael Grove basically says, "I don't even taste anything." Um, so that was a good moment. Uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto said, "Like all of them were spicy," which was kind of funny. And then the last moment, which was hilarious, is there was one that was chocolate. They had to kind of guess what the flavor was. There was yeah. one that was like chocolate in the middle. And Grove's like, it tastes like blueberry. <laughs> and then they're like, it's chocolate. And he's like, oh, uh, yeah, okay. I taste the chocolate now. I taste the chocolate now. So, oh uh, yeah, I'm looking at Bobby. I'm looking at Bobby just go, what was that shrimp flavor? Oh, no wonder. Oh, come on, yeah, Bobby. Exactly. Yeah, not a seafood guy. Bobby hey, Miller, not on. a seafood guy. Oh. Unrefined palate. I think Bobby Miller, based on this video, would fit right in with the Dodger blue crew is my, uh, is my estimation, but we see some people in the chat saying we've got to get Blake to go through the snacks. And uh, look, I've said it. I can't wait to see Blake um, eat food in Korea. It's going to be fantastic. It's the food wait. is so good in Korea. That's the thing. So um, all right, let's get to some questions. If you've got any questions, throw them in the chat, all caps questions. We got about five or six minutes. We'll take some of those before we have to run. Um, <laughs> somebody's saying the blueberry base notes, Michael Grove just has a sophisticated palate. That might be true. It's those those two things in my mind don't taste very similar. So um, who knows? Uh, <laughs> here we go. This is a great question. Larry, if River Ryan somehow makes it to the postseason roster, do you think he would be a better pinch hitting option than Austin Barnes? I'm only half joking. If you don't know, River Ryan was a two, two-way player when he was in college. And then with the Padres, they tried him out mostly as a hitter. He comes over to the Dodgers in exchange for Matt Beatty, a trade that has worked out rather nicely. And yep. is now full time a pitcher, and he's a top one hundred guy. But he can hit. Um, Scott, I'll let you answer this. Do you think Austin Barnes is a better hitter than River Ryan? Uh, currently, where they're at, yes, I, w- I would say so. I would say so. Not if you just were like, all right, River, grab a bat, get in there. Like he's not. He's not. I don't think he's doing anything. But uh, you're gonna hold. Trying so to nobody see clip that, please. Nobody clip that if this ever happens. Uh, no. Austin Barnes, Austin Barnes is my, my first base hit guy. First swing he sees. Okay. Uh, 2021, the CPX level, which I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, 43 plate appearances, River Ryan, uh, 308 batting average, 349 on base, 436 slug with a home run. Oh, no, so, I'm getting owned. Oh, God. 
I mean, it's just like he's like an 800 OPS, but like below a ball. No, so, he's not. He's not Austin Barnes. No, 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 no. Austin Barnes is going up there and getting a knock before he does. Yeah, Scott, Scott, tell the people your bold prediction for the Dodgers. I mean, everybody can get on. Everybody can join the wagon. Austin Barnes getting a base hit in his first at bat. Yeah. I don't want to go. attach anything yet because I almost said I would said I would jump in my pool in a suit when if Yamamoto. We have signed. a ten dollar bet on it, so I'm feeling we pretty do. good about that. We do that's fine. We do, we do we do we do. I'm okay. You could, you'll you'll buy me my first beer in Vegas this summer. Let's do it. Yeah, why not? Absolutely. Gi, it seemed like a good trade at the time. Feeling a bit of seller's remorse for the Tony Watson for O'Neill Cruz. Well, I mean, why do you got to bring this up, Gi? Come like, on, a little no. bit of seller's remorse. You Next. better be feeling a lot more than a little bit of seller's remorse. Look, Next. this is the danger of trading prospects. Sometimes they turn into O'Neill Cruz and Jordan Alvarez. Those are like the 5% of trades that Andrew Friedman has made, but they are exist. They, they, they are in existence. And so there you go. Uh, oh, here we go. Bob Knight. We have to, I know you don't like food questions, Scott, but Bob asked it. I mean, uh, I've pizza got a Pringles vested... or pizza Lunchables. I have got a vested interest in pizza Lunchables. Those are Nora's favorite. Uh, I'm going to say pizza Lunchables. We all went there. Those yeah. are the best, man. If you didn't like, if you were a kid and you didn't like cracking open your lunchbox and seeing a pizza lunchable, I don't know what you were doing. Yeah. I remember when they came out with like the nachos lunchable. That was my favorite, but I'm definitely going pizza lunchables here. I'm not a fan of pizza Pringles for, for whatever, for whatever it's worth. Uh, Dong wants to know the origin of the intro organ music. No idea. Uh, <laughs> it was like a clip we found online and it was an organ, which baseball, the organ. So there you go. I wish I had a better story. Uh, you know what? Scratch all that. Forgot all. Forget I said all that. It's Blake in his basement. He has an organ, and we had him just freestyle for us. And that's when Kept he came down there until it sounded good again. Yeah. Shout out to Blake. Uh, zip code zero over under Bobby Miller wins of twenty. Holy under. smokes, Scott! Under. Oh my god, twenty. What's the number? I mean, Woo! if I go fifteen and a half, are you going over or under, Scott? Uh, what did he just have? Hold on. Like hold 13? on. Hold on. I think he was 13? 13 last year. Someone check me. Does somebody do it before I can? Somebody in chat knows it before I do. Here we go. Uh, 11 and 4. 11. Oh, you said 15? 15 and a half. So I'll 16 say, would be I'll over. say 17. I'm going to be high. But you got to think. He started. There's a lot of games where the offense just wasn't. Oh, I got to look at his run support. But there's yeah. a lot of games where he just he, – he got behind way early. I think yeah. if you – Use those. I'm gonna say I'll say 17. I think he gets 17 this year. Yeah, I, I think 16 would be kind of 16, 17 range would be my guess. So uh, a lot there though. you go. That's a ton. Uh William wants to know any update on Blake Trinan. Have you heard anything, Scott? I've not. If you want to fact check that real quick, and I actually saw that liner while you're checking that, see if I can, but that was a thud. He got drilled. And he's a Blake Trinan's a big dude, and he just wore that straight in the ribs. So I, I yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of let him get his legs under him before that because that's but he's a he's a he's a competitor he'll yeah. be okay uh but definitely a scary line drive right back at him so yeah. hopefully there's no residuals there but we know how you know bone bruises are especially to the rib cage uh yeah. and he's kind here's of the like, here's a report from bill plunkett uh yeah. this was a couple days ago blake trinan su suffered a bruised lung but no fractures when he was hit by a line drive dodgers hopefully he'll be available by korea so there you go hopeful he'll be okay. available for korea bruised our gradrol will not be in korea um hoping that he's back for the domestic opening day yeah um here we go if stone and emmett both pitch well do you think the dodgers go with the six-man rotation or will one of them be sent to the bullpen or to the minors i i don't i don't think they're gonna go well i think one of them would sent down that would be my answer yeah they want they they dodgers have been pretty consistent on this that they for pitchers, they if they can, they're going to keep them in a regular rotation. They don't want to put anybody to the bull. They, those both don't profile like Emmett. We know he can. He's in. A, he would be an elite reliever if he yeah. stuck that long term. But they're not. They, he's not at a point in his career where they're going to pull that plug. So the Dodgers want to keep him in a regular rotation. So young, like I think that uh, whichever one they choose, it'll be full for now. It'll be Gavin until Emmett's ready to go. Um, it might be Gavin Stone getting the start early on. But yeah. as far as like a six man rotation, I don't think they'll they'll give abbreviated stuff. I think that six man spot will be when you, Ryan Yarbrough will kind of get the bulk yeah. of his run. Yeah, I was going to say Michael Grove or Ryan Yarbrough, a guy that they're probably more comfortable shifting back and forth between relief pitcher and starter. That's why I don't think it would be Stone and Emmett. I think they might have a six man rotation at times. I just think those aren't the two guys. Like they're not going to keep one of those guys up on the major league roster for twelve days to make one start. It is kind yeah. of the, the catch. It would be it would be ridiculous. 
TQT, if bets can't cut it, it's short and has to move back to second. Where does that put Lux in terms of future seasons? Trade bait, outfield, question mark. I mean, they've got Teoscar Hernandez and Jason Hayward on one-year deals. So I suppose there are some openings potentially in the outfield. Um, I know uh, we've had Anthony Wittrado mm. on here. He thinks outfield is Lux's ultimate destination. What do you think? Do you think if Mookie has to move back to second, does Lux become trade bait or start taking fly balls in left field? Mm. The Miguel Vargas route, does he do that? It's possible. He that, was the original Miggy V. He was, he was he the was original the Miggy V. Remember that? And then he ran into the outfield wall. <laughs> so, I mean, it could be. That might change like a change of scenery just in a, on a different position in the outfield. Yeah. might be the wave. But as far as trade bait, I, there's we talked about that earlier. If you, you know, TQT, good to see you, man. But uh, check out what we talked about earlier on. His trade value is pretty low. Like, It'll be the Dodgers aren't going to sell low on him, and if they do, it's just because they want to give him a fresh, you know, scenery elsewhere. But I think a move to the outfield would be very interesting if his yeah. if his arm is you know able to if he's able to find a cutoff man better than he's able to find first base. Then absolutely, yeah. But if that will be there. I'm excited about his bat. I, I truly am. I really am yeah. excited to see how he could be you know a dynamic player at the bottom of the lineup. So I, if if you separate the offense and defense, I've been talking about how he was super valuable from the eight nine spot. Yeah, uh, when he was healthy. So I'm excited to see that again. Um, yeah. But I'll be worried when he's on the field. Yeah, I think they would try him at outfield. I think that would be the next progression is that if Mookie has to move to second, Gavin goes down, takes reps in the outfield. And you left see field? Him where would you want him? Uh, Yeah, I mean, outman's in center field. So left field. And, you know, you know, I joked about I, I just threw out right field, not really thinking about it. And I think whoever I was on the show with was like, uh, he doesn't have the arm for right field. I'm like, touche, touche, left field. That would be good where Gavin Lux is. Uh, Richard wants to know which happens first Barnes hits a home run or Blake Snell signs. I mean, this might be, this is Blake Snell by months, right? Yeah, it has to be. Hey, lay off, lay off the guy. I mean, yeah, it's gotta be, it's going to be Blake Snell. I would say like by a month by yeah. today. Uh, yeah. How, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll just, we're both on Snell. It'll be before it'll be Blake Snell before that, but yeah. When does Austin Barnes get his first homer? Anybody in the chat? If you, yeah, if somebody gets it right, I'll look through these later on. If somebody gets this right on the day that he hits his first home run, I'll send you a bobblehead of a, something extra that I have. Wow, look at this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, follow me, on, follow me on Twitter. Shout out, and then we'll and then we'll we'll reconnect. Somebody give me one. No, I need exact date, Maddie. Man, I don't want June. Tell me like okay. June. 5th. He had two home runs last year. Do you want to guess what when he hit his first, Scott? Uh, April 1st was opening day or his first game. Uh, his first appearance was opening day. July 18th. Uh, you were a month early. August oh, 17th. Gosh. August 17th was his first home run last year. I want exact. I want to find. Give me a week. Give me exact week. If you get and it within a, a week later, span. September 17th, he hit his second. And that, that was all she wrote for our guy. Austin. Somebody give me a week span. That's fine. Just put one day and then I'll, I'll go a week in that in that range. And we'll, we'll yeah. talk then. Hawaiian Kira, any updates on May or Gonsolin? Not really. We're not, Gonsolin's done for the year. Uh, Dustin May, check, circle back around the All-Star Blake break is uh, is what I would say there. Not the All-Star Blake, the All-Star break. Uh, Lewis wants to know, do you see the Dodgers taking a stab at Montgomery or Snell? It's a, I would be 10 out of 10 shocked if they yeah. made a move on either of these. I would, I would cannonball into the pool in my blue suit if that happened. Uh, backflip. I wouldn't yeah. be able to do that. So, uh, but yeah, I would be blown away if they go back into the well and bring Snell in, but a one-year deal, it's possible, yeah. Jeff, but I don't think they need it. I think no. we, I think Matt and I talked about this, that it just bringing another arm like that, where you have to insert him there, where there's no maneuverability just pushes that line back. And then it, then it creates more problems of their yeah. prospects who are ready to pitch in the big leagues. Now it's like, now you have to see them through another spot in triple a, and delay their start in the big leagues even farther out. I think they're, I don't think they're ready to, I don't yeah. think they want to do that anymore with Kershaw Bueller. Like they need, they need the spots. Yeah. History man. 0828. Uh, am I alone in thinking we only have Barnes for sentimental reasons, catching the last out of the 2020 world series. It, he's a clubhouse guy. And combined with the fact that the catching market is an absolute wasteland. Like as much as everybody knows, I am down on Austin Barnes there are a handful of teams in major league baseball. He would probably be starting for. So he he's you not a, what? Oh yeah. You think you dude, think I got to look, I don't know. Dude, the catching position, the catching position is a wasteland. Let's see this. Uh, a starter, like a starter. 
I think Austin Barnes would be a starter on a few. Yeah. Teams. I mean, he's, 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 yeah, he's, they, yeah, we've seen, we've definitely seen worse. I'll give you that. Okay. So of a hundred uh, for the catchers, record catchers, Oh, catchers last year. Let's see, let's do 200 plate appearances. Let's see how many guys had an offensive weighted runs created plus over a hundred. Oh, 16. So 16 catchers who were above average offensively. I mean, that's a lot. It's a lot. That's like, yeah, I mean, some of these guys down at the bottom, let's see how many we had. That's out of 45 guys with uh, at least 200 at bats. Do you want to guess out of 45 where Austin Barnes ranked in weighted runs created plus? Uh, 41. 44. You were being nice. Austin Hedges, the only guy worse. Austin Hedges had 212 plate high, appearances, man. Scott. 212 plate appearances. He had a weighted runs created plus of 24. Hedges is a dog. Like he, I played against him when I was a kid. He was a mountain. Yeah, I may, I may adjust that. I don't think Austin Barnes. He had a 41 weighted runs created plus last year. He might not be starting on five teams. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that one back. Pull that one back. Uh, yeah, I mean he's a clubhouse guy. And he's a backup catcher, and who cares? That's that's why Austin Barnes. Is here. <laughs> Next, I like yeah. that. Next, next. Yep. Uh, okay, yeah. let's see. We got try and get to one or two more here. The Pirates people. Yeah, I mean, look. Yeah, all right. I got some people saying that. Uh. That they might agree. Oh man. <laughs> uh man, I scrolled past all the questions, I think. Uh I oh, need okay. all right. Who right field pavilion wants to know Scott? What would be your walk-up song if you were a Dodger? You go first. I gotta I, I, you go first. Oh man, this is a question that I feel like you need to think about. Yeah, uh, you do. Man. I gotta Party pull, I gotta pull by my Taylor Spotify. Quinn. I need to open Party. my Spotify to think about this. Party in the USA. That's what I'm going I for. Mean, that's not bad. Not bad. Big Miley Cyrus guy over here. Yeah. Hope she's doing the Super Bowl. But yeah, I what did I say? Knows. I think I said Taylor Swift. I meant Miley Cyrus. Apologies to all the Swifties that I just defended. Everybody weeps. Everybody's in denial about Miley Cyrus being an absolute powerhouse. Come at me. Okay. You know. got one? I don't know. I don't know. I'd probably do like the Bulls theme, the, the you know, whatever that is, the Bulls theme song. Remember that oh, yeah. from the 90s? Uh, yeah, dope. Van Halen right now, I think it's called. Nah, that's a banger. It's, that's actually nah, a great nah, one. Nah. It's like the, and eh, now nah, everybody knows what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's the, it's the, yeah, it's, it's solid. Um, okay. Two, I have two food questions for you, Scott. Okay. These are mine. I asked these to Steven Nelson too. First one is you walk into a donut shop. What are you walking out with? Maple bar. Okay, straight. I mean, maple, maple bar, maybe in a apple fritter. Yeah, apple fritter. And um, oh, that's that might be it. I don't want to go too crazy. Yeah, I'm apple fritter guy, and then I like the I like the childish cake donuts with sprinkles and frosting on top. Really? Donuts. Okay, just a classic. Just a classic. Okay, the other one is we've had. There's been a debate about ice cream flavors on the Dodger Blue staff. Where do you stand on pistachio ice cream? It's fine. It's it's okay. fine. It's like it's the same thing of just like I know who did. Yeah, somebody asked me. I was like, it's fine. I don't you know, it is. What it Matt, is. Got, Matt, got, Matt says that's what he orders. And Blake thinks he's crazy. I mean, Blake also thinks cream cheese avocado rolls are good. So, I mean, like, you know, you got to think about that. So right. uh, it's fine. It's it's what's, one of those your like, go to like you walk into Baskin Robbins. What do you get? I've got so it just I like. Right now, uh, mint chip is terrific. But if if I see like a cotton candy, I know nobody get on me about that. But if I see like a cotton candy, I used to get cotton candy when I was a kid, like in preschool. I remember we'd go to TCBY. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. I get a little bit of a yeah, you know, and get a little cotton candy ice cream. Nora liked it for like a week and it was a euphoric thing. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, but mint chip one. Uh, and then this is the worst one for you. Once I found out how much like stuff is in it, but like strawberry is terrible for you, I guess, but, okay. uh, let's dance. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Just some good strawberry, man. Yeah. yeah. Mint chip. Mint chips, my choice as well. It's cold, uh, cotton candy flavored anything I'm out on though. That's okay. There was a cotton candy flavored cookie at this bakery. I was at yesterday. Yes, I texted you a picture. I texted you a picture. The, ba the bakery is called the Lux Lux bakery. It's up here in Oregon. And what is it? There, there's a literally we're texting about Gavin Lux and there's a hashtag on the wall that says like live, live life Lux or something like that. It was just so perfect. So perfect. So anyways. industry plant. Yeah. Uh, okay. No more splitter. This is a good one. We'll go out on this. What's your strikeout pitch to get the last out in MLB 24. If you're playing Blake. 
Oh, uh, I know everybody. Matt wants me. He's sitting in his computer, like, say the fastball down the middle. I'm not. Fastball middle, uh, middle, right? No, no, no. Where I'm saying, uh, I'm saying sinker on the hands because there's not a chance. Blake's reaction time would he, no way. He, okay. Easy swing. I like it. I like it. Well, hey, everybody. We appreciate you joining us here on Dodger Heads. As always, tons of content coming up. I've mentioned some of it. We've got an interview with John Rooney up now. Please go check that out. Tomorrow, Steven Nelson, Dodgers play-by-play guy, will be on the show. We recorded that a couple of hours ago. And then later this week, we've got a Willie Adamas video coming. We've got a Hassan Kim video coming as trade targets. And then, of course, uh, Friday night, I will be back doing a live show, 9 o'clock p.m. on that one. We've got a live show Sunday night. We've got a, a ton of content coming next week, season preview type stuff. And then, hey, a breakfast morning live post game show next Wednesday at like 6 30 in the morning or whenever the heck that 3 a.m. game ends. So tons of content. So if you're not already, please subscribe and ring the notification bell here on YouTube. If you're a podcast person listening after the fact, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can check out the podcast, Apple, Spotify, Google, just search for Dodger heads. And please you do us a huge favor. If you went over there, liked, subscribed, rated, review. That goes a long way towards helping us. So please go and do that. You can check out Scott at Scott Gearman on social media, me at Jeff Spiegel, and of course at Dodger Blue 1958 everywhere. That is Scott. I am Jeff. Enjoy the rest of your night, folks. And as always, go Dodgers.